in looking at the way that lipids are involved in treating people with persistent fatigue. And my work for many, many years was involved in the aberration of energy production due to immune insult, leading to a cascade of consequences that led to mitochondrial membrane oxidation. And so he and I sat down and had lunch together afterwards, and uh, we started to explore the idea of doing a lipid replacement therapy utilizing an oral supplement rather than an intravenous phosphatidyl serine or phosphatidylcholine process, which had been explored for a number of years uh, and had been written about many times. So very simply, the membranes around all of our cells have a degree of capacity to flex and bend, which allows those cells to become curved. They have an inner membrane and an outer membrane. And inside those membranes are embedded various molecules, proteins, lipids, fats. And then inside there, there are rafts or congregations of lipids. And all of these agents flex and bend. And the healthier we are, in very simple terms, the more flexible and the greater ability we have to renew those lipids than when we're unhealthy. And there are many explanations that you can follow through for almost every disease, whether it's a chronic or an acute disease, that leads to changes in membrane fluidity. And so what we began to explore was the idea that you could take an oral supplement that would be transported across a small intestinal barrier and then disperse in different forms throughout the body so that cells that were in need of renewal could take those lipids into the membranes and return the fluidity and flexibility. So in very simple biochemical terms, the concept is to improve both the cell membrane and then ultimately, as we'll get into a bit more detail, the inner mitochondrial membrane as well. So why do some cells need, uh, become in need? Well, the, the simplest one of all is that as we age, we are less efficient at replacing both the primary cell membrane molecules, the fats and the lipids, uh, and secondly, that the inner workings of the cell, which are the mitochondria that we're going to refer to, rely on a large part of both regeneration and recycling, which requires us to provide a certain form of different fractions of lipids. So you can have infection, uh, you can have insult, you can have stress, you can have aging, you can have environmental triggers. Everything that we in the functional medicine community would regard within the matrix has as a consequence an event at the lipid barrier. And if we're very healthy, it's a short term transition in which the lipids might become stiffer or more permeable or less permeable, and they can be corrected through lifestyle and dietary interventions all of which are relevant to what we're going to be talking about, because although we're talking about an oral replacement therapy, it has its limitations operating in isolation. It has to be combined with all the other strategies that we're familiar with in the functional medicine model. Interesting. So, you know, in a, in a sort of a, a normal, healthy environment, would these be being replaced by dietary fat? Yeah. So essentially, you can take in whether it be animal fat or plant fats, as long as they're broken down into their constituent components, they will be utilized by cell membranes. And I think we're all familiar with the idea of an oxidized fats so are generally seen to be therapeutically disadvantageous, whereas unoxidized fats, which are flexible and can be bound into membranes, confer an advantage. The concept that we simply have a more flexible membrane underestimates the importance in terms of human functionality. So in order for your brain, your liver, your kidneys, any tissue in your body to be able to operate, to be able to transfer messages, to be able to move proteins or fats in and out to flex, uh, they require some capacity to renew those lipids on a regular basis. And what we began to see uh, 20 odd years ago was that people with persistent fatigue seem to have an immune response. It's often very difficult to quantify, but it's possible to look for certain cytokine markers in patients who have, initially I was exploring predominantly people with persistent unrelenting fatigue. We could find that certain cytokine profiles were raised, in particular is leukin-1 and TNF-alpha, which suggested either that there was an infection or some form of insult was taking place. And the consequence of that was 
a raised level of defense mechanisms, which are very tiring. If you want to defend yourself, everyone knows that feeling. We get a tickle in the throat. It's very hard to maintain that same level of energy when your body is effectively distributing energy towards the production of either white blood cells or other types of mechanisms to defend you. And whilst in the early days, it was difficult to quantify what that might be, I began to piece together and Garth's work really helped to pull this into some form of clinical strategy uh, that there may be what we call a sterile inflammatory event. And this has been looked at now for the last 10 or 15 years where particulates from these cell membranes and also from the inner membranes of the mitochondria are oxidized because of a uh, an insult to their structural um, flexibility. And they then distribute themselves around the body and are recognized by pattern recognition receptors as being problematic. The attempt to eliminate them is a normal process of uh, clearance from the body, either back into the stool, to the urine, to the liver, to the kidneys, and so on. Mm -hmm. But if they continue to be produced on a regular basis, the energy necessary to do that becomes depleting. And it's very difficult in order for that person to recover from either the original insult with a post-viral fatigue, for example, uh, long COVID for uh, Garth will uh, recently been writing about the fact that long COVID is a classic example where we see persistent sterile inflammatory consequences of the original insult. So <clears throat> looking at the very delicate membranes inside mitochondria where they rely on cardiolipin uh, or the membranes of the cell where there's a wide range of glycerophospholipids to make up those areas, an opportunity to replace them with undamaged, unoxidized lipids, therapeutically suggested that there should be a benefit. Great, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what were your first forays into, you know, into providing this orally and how did it go and what did you learn along the way as far as like what was a, you know, because I'm sure you're sort of like, um, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're sort of just going on, on uh, your understanding of the physiology and what you think might work. And then when you start doing it, I'm sure you learn a lot. Yeah, of course. And I think there are, as with all interventions, there's normally um, a parameter that allows you to derive some benefit without being too problematic. I and mean, then there are sort of extremes where it's either too little. And so the person becomes disaffected and disillusioned or you give too much. And so over the years of using this, there's a rough rule of thumb, something between two and six grams per day of uh, lipids, of which uh, from a commercial perspective, there's a company called Natural Therapeutics that has been producing these lipids under Garth's instruction now for a number of years. Um, we would use it either as a powder or a, a tablet or a capsule. So we can deliver it either on their own or in conjunction with various antioxidants or other nutrients which appear to also benefit from a transporter mechanism. So the lipids themselves seem to provide additional capacity for the cell membrane to allow those nutrients, which are sometimes difficult to penetrate for that soluble tissues to enter into the cell. So if you give somebody, say for example, we take an individual who's had exposure to some form of environmental toxin, and a lot of work was done by Garth with um, people from the Gulf War exposure. So much of the work that I first began to read about was people that are being exposed to various noxious chemicals um, for which fatigue was a characteristic, but there were many other symptoms, including pain, uh, loss of energy. And <clears throat> I know rather uniquely, Garth is an honorary colonel in the special forces uh, of America because of the work that he spent uh, time doing it. One of only two people, and the other person was his wife uh, before she passed away. Um, but they were given special uh, military promotions because of the work. And what they found was that they could both drive into the cell nutrients necessary for the cellular function to enhance, but they could also excise those or bring out of the cell contaminants. And like all these things, if you try and bring out things that are problematic to render harmless too quickly, the consequences can be that that person ends up feeling uh, worse than they began. So dosing for these things between two and six grams per day, I think um, I, I gave you a few examples. We've published numerous uh, narrative reviews and also um, co-authored studies on the use of these interventions in different groups of people from aged people to 
people with toxic exposure and also people with persistent fatigue, chemotherapy induced fatigue. There's a variety of different ways. It's terribly easy. I've, I've, I know when we've, be, we've been writing, we've written thousands of words on this. So it's, there's, a, there's a lot of technical data. Virtually all of these are free to read. So you can search through PubMed. Uh, and we tend to write for fairly dull journals. <laughs> Uh, so they're not the sort of typical journal that the average clinician is going to uh, look at, but uh, things like membranes and uh, I think what we did two very long ones for Biochemica et Physica Acta, which is a name in itself, which you're never going to re uh, repeat in a public company. But essentially, these are journals that specialize in lipid dynamics and lipid therapeutics and uh, we wanted to introduce to these uh, scientific groups and try to encourage more research being done through independent uh, institutions to show how it's possible to basically resuscitate cells and more importantly, resuscitate mitochondria. And by doing so, you can reverse the age-related changes that occur in all of us. And in doing so, you can not just simply improve energy, which is a fundamental component of all activities that take place, but you can also rid the body of various problematic agents.